No, they're just going to replace the Avengers if the Avengers lose at this point. Yeah, what, like the replacements, like the Avengers get blown up, so they just bring in Dom Toretto. That should be the next plot. We're reaching there. Like the boys, right? The I mean, in the next movie, I'm expressing some. I'm expecting someone just to have laser eyes. Yeah. <laughs> like laser vision, like Superman. And bullets. Like, like Homelander. Yeah, like Homelander. And right. Rubber bullets don't hurt the Rock in this one, but in the next one, real bullets don't hurt him. Right. <laughs> How do you explain that? You know, a lot of push-ups. Chest of steel. L- a lot of push-ups. <laughs> I replaced my pectoral muscle with, with car parts. iron. <laughs> with car parts? Mm-hmm. <laughs> a muffler? Oh, no. And then, like, what about, uh, I guess, as I guess we're getting towards, like, the, the finale, right? I and mean, what, what do you think about, uh, you know, the you're fired and the gunfight with the helicopter? What do you, what'd you think oh, about those action scenes? Just, I mean, they're, they're utterly ridiculous, right? I mean, um, but I... I I love my, there's only one thing that's so ridiculous that it takes me out of it in this whole movie, the whole movie. And that is when he shoots the missile with our head bad guy attached to it. That's the <laughs> only and it turns out funny. I laugh when it goes through the building and it hits the enemy helicopter. Right. But that that's the only moment that takes me out of the whole movie for all its ridiculousness. <laughs> Although some people, someone I know uh, was complaining about something. Uh, my friend Jesse from New Jersey said What's the damage radius of a nuclear bomb off the Florida Keys? I was wondering that. Like, how far do you actually have to be away? Do they do they evacuate the Keys? No. Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> just covers Jamie Lee's eyes and kisses her. No, and they're only halfway down the Keys, too. They're at Marathon. That's in the middle. So it's just a mini test. It's a yada yada nuclear bomb. <laughs> it's a Merv n- nuclear warhead. Yeah, it's Well, but in this world... It has a, a 190th life. Span. It only kills everything in a one square mile. Yeah, yeah there it is. There you go. And, and nothing <laughs> goes past it. There's no fallout. Right. The radiation, none of that. True lies fallout. It's the sequel, 30 years yeah. in the future. Yeah. Actually, my, my friend even joked, and what's the fallout? He he, he, went, he, he was even saying, I, I feel like this went unaddressed, but I guess Cameron had nothing to prove after Terminator 2. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it was a yada yada because they were close to it. No one worried. So I think you guys are right. It's a one mile nuclear bomb. Sure. I mean, they treated that like it was a Scud missile. Yeah. (laughs) Except for the mushroom cloud in the background. A very small mushroom cloud. Very, very small. Yeah. Yeah. And then it just dissipates. It's like a minimal damage nuclear bomb. I mean, so I know you you think that I love that that when he shoots him on. So it sucks down into an ocean vortex and it goes into Godzilla's lair and powers him. Yep, There's going to be some giant uh, lizards. No, no, that's why they're a problem in the glades now. Iguanas. There's some nuclear iguanas running around because of this movie. Well, well, it'll be like nuclear anaconda versus nuclear iguana on sci-fi. Oh, in the keys. And it takes place in the same world as true lies. (laughs) <laughs> that needs to happen. The True Lies yeah. Cinematic Universe. Oh, I love it. And what about uh, Art Malik, the terrorist, getting his nuts racked on the airplane and then doing the double take when the airplane comes up to him? He, there were there were so <laughs> many like like Wiley Coyote like googly eyed yeah. moments in that in that sequence. And then of course that and that janitor who was, was oh, just yeah. cleaning up. He was just cleaning up, and, and the Harrier jet like. Backs into like this office where this janitor is just jamming on his Walkman, cleaning up. Mm-hmm. They did that with Stan Lee in uh, one of his cameos in Spider Man. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And then oh, there's another one when they blow up the bridge and those terrorist van is half and half, and a pelican lands on it. Oh my God! Give that pelican a medal. That was such a great scene. I like those guys because that was this, oh oh man, we forgot about something when he's filming the thing and the battery dies. Oh yeah. Oh, but uh, he's, he's, he's making he's, one, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> he's making his big speech and the batteries die. That's a funny thing. They, they really let him get deep into that speech too. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he 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 got through all of his mission statement and was just getting to his demands. <laughs> Battery and this dude sweating bullets. <laughs> and then when he does die to that pelican pendulum moment, the yell, the yell <laughs> they do is so <laughs> like they just they go full throttle and and for whatever reason the thing explodes. Yeah, it does. It does blow up. <laughs> that I, was survivable. Yeah. I don't understand how people don't realize that this is quite a humorous movie. Yeah, I mean this is a yeah. It's like you can't take it too seriously. I, 
like this i just love the speech no, did you pay attention to the, i didn't pay attention to the speech because i'm just laughing at the guy with the camera no because you're waiting for him to mention the battery yeah because <laughs> he's got to eventually right women and our children i remember that was a line in there oh i, I don't even remember that oh we forgot the part where so arnold and helen are back together and they're escaping the place in the keys and she comes around the back of the building and takes her high heels off because they're gonna have to run. Oh yeah, she, married Rambo. And then she de Jurassic Park uh, World. She doesn't pull that whole bit. Yeah, she takes the high heels off. She doesn't run in them. Yeah, I love that. that. That was when she got her little cute moment. I married Rambo. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> and she sounds so perturbed. Like she's not trying. It's like the character is not trying to be funny. She's almost like in shock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, originally this movie was supposed to be. It was supposed to be. Arnold Schwarzenegger, True Lies, and, like, Jamie Lee Curtis, but then James Cameron edited it so much, and he put them both before the titles, which I think is pretty awesome. This is supposed to be, like, an Arnold Schwarzenegger picture, but then she she got co-billing. Which Good. She, des- she certainly deserves it. Yeah, he decided it was a story about marriage, so he wanted to put her up there, and Arnold agreed to it. And she said it was a real she- mensch move. <laughs> mm-hmm. She had her own fight scene yeah. in that limo. With Tia. And she oh, beats yeah. Tia over the head with a full bottle of champagne more than once. What is with Jamie Lee Curtis and, and, and huge blunt instrument trauma? She is beating people over the head. I'm surprised it's not mush. She's going to be a great spy, too. She can lie really well, and she loves blunt force trauma. I really appreciate mm. that that champagne bottle doesn't instantly burst, like in some movies when they hit the person with the beer bottle. The bottle's not breaking. It's really thick. Yep. She That's even good. looked at it after the first time. Like, she was shocked it didn't break. <laughs> she stopped that. and looked at it like, huh? And then, how about two? Do you think <laughs> Tia's out there? Do you think she survived that? Well, as we know, every car crash in this movie results in an explosion. Yeah. So yeah, I was when that went into the it water, did. it did, and we saw it in the movie. When that went into the water, it exploded. <laughs> oh, it exploded? How did I know? Yeah, that? I was and thinking. All, all these cars explode in this movie. It's laughable. All of these cars are bomb powered. But because yeah. don't forget, because there was all of the pylons down there from when they shot out the bridge. Oh yeah. So, so like when it, it's not like it was just going into the water; it was going into the pylon. You know, all the rubble. I like so it. she. I don't know how she was conscious though to even see that thing going over. Are you saying that she has a super skull like Marv and Harry do in the Home Alone movies? I'm saying that she recovered from those hits to the head faster than a T-800 would. <laughs> with the, with, I, yeah, those bottles are, are dangerous. Oh, man. Now, Megan also noticed that I like that James Cameron added the lobster traps into the keys. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It's little details in this movie. They really thought this through. And the, the, the green... Ambulances? Oh, the fire rescue trucks. Those were actual my Metro Dade fire rescue trucks at the time. And how happy were you, John, when he turned an Uzi into a flamethrower? That was interesting. <laughs> that thing was uh <laughs> that thing was going like twenty five feet. <laughs> He's lighting people on fire, dude. That's that seems even more vicious than shooting people, by the way. Yeah, they were just lit up. So many explode, and uh, he got the slow motion dive with the the fire going over. Swimming him. with the oh, camera yeah. underneath him while he was swimming, looking up at the flames over the water. What a cool scene! But his form is quite excellent while he swims. Yeah, he looks great. And Megan Dude, also found some research where James Cameron said he made every shot difficult. So next time you watch this movie, John, just watch all the camera movements and just every shot. There's always something to it. Oh, he said that about all of his filmmaking. Yeah, he, it's more difficult than what it should be. Yeah. People apparently hate working with James Cameron, but, like, when they made Abyss, right, it was miserable down there, but he was with the crew the entire time. So when everyone's complaining, he's like, you guys are a bunch of wimps, I'm here. So he, right. it's, like, miserable, <laughs> but he's with you in the misery, if that makes sense. He, he, I, I, when I was rewatching this, I was shocked at how beautiful some of the shots were in terms of camera movement. Even when he was taking Gizmo out for a walk in the rain to give Tom Arnold the purse, the sweeping motion of that camera like was so much more than it had to be. And that didn't really register until you made your comment now. But I remember seeing that and being like, that's a great shot. Yeah, it's funny, though. It, I, he probably annoyed the heck out of everybody on set. Cause didn't and that go, dog. Didn't it, oh, she dog. was getting soaked. And I guess Tia Carrera was only supposed to be on this movie for, what, seven weeks? Five weeks? Uh, no, I think it was... 
even shorter than that. And she was she ended up there for months. Yeah, seven months, you said? And she got paid for all of it? That's a James Cameron movie right there. But then it goes and makes a ton of money, and then people love it. I, I, what's not to love? I mean, I, again, <laughs> people can have their reactions that we discussed at the beginning. Hey, uh, stop but, trying to cheer me up, John. Right. <laughs> People can, people can have their discussions, but it's like I, I, I have difficulty understanding. If you grew up with this movie, yeah. I'm going to give, give it at least that disclaimer, right? If you do grew up with this movie, I don't understand how you don't love this. Uh, I, I have six pages of notes here. I just want to get two things out. I love when Tom Arnold kisses the pole after getting shot. <laughs> I, I have a special comment about that man. Hey, that man and, and that telephone pole was one of the the times that I laughed out loud. Even though I've seen this movie like 30 times, I laughed out loud in my living room, alone. I'm alone, and I laughed at that scene. I mean, it's just, it's funny. Like, that's a good bit right in there. Because he went and hid behind that thing, and if he had time to hit pause on his life, he would have been like, I'm going to die, but I have to at least try to live. You, you know his stomach would have been shot or yeah. something. Like, oh, it, what? <laughs> And, and I'm so have, glad you mentioned that. We have some, I don't know how you're going to take this news, but Mick G, the guy who did Charlie's Angels, he did um, he did The Babysitter. He's doing a series for Disney Plus, a true live series. I don't know how to react. <laughs> I, no, really, I don't, I don't know if I'm thrilled or upset. Yeah, I'm not it's sure gonna, what to do with that. Asking, I, yeah, it's pretty interesting, right? I don't know. I, don't, like, I mean, are they going to be rehashing a bunch of things? Are they stretching this movie into a miniseries? Or is this after or before? Ooh. Is this like the Jack Ryan thing? What or am I going like... to say, yeah, but they were all bad again? Oh. <laughs> they were all bad. What if it's uh. like Eliza Dushku in the future? Oh, that'd be awesome. Picking up the family business. The way I see it is very Mick G style of sense of humor, but they already know about each other. Or maybe she's a spy and she has the husband and the husband gets into it. Because didn't she have to lie to her husband and Alias? Was she an Alias? No, Jennifer Garner. Wasn't she a spy Jennifer and Garner. she had to lie to her person? Uh, that was a long well, time she ago. Was, she, I don't think she was attached for a long time. Oh, okay. And then she got into, uh, what's his name, Varner. Oh, yeah, she was with Bradley Cooper there for a while, Well, too. no, he was her BFF. Oh. And he was obsessed with her. Got it. And then he got killed. I think it'll just be a fun comedy where they know about each other. And I think if they do it now, it's going to be the female spy. But I think McGee, if he can catch the vibe of it, it could be fun. I think it should be Eliza Dushku. Yeah, well, I, I would hope that he doesn't go like to the extreme that he does with his Charlie's Angels movies, though. Like, because yeah, they were a little out there. Not that I didn't enjoy them. It was like a color explosion. Those right? movies. Well, and then all the wire work was kind of silly. I, I do like what Meg said, Eliza Dushku. Well, you know she's a badass. She did Buffy for so long. And she, you know, after the bad press about what happened to her on the set of this, give her a chance to run it back. Who would you cast opposite her? Ooh. Ego UA. <laughs> that would be <Ooh>. awesome. <laughs> Scott Adkins. Yeah. Give me Scott oh! Adkins. No, I no. want Scott Adkins. Scotty or give him the bad guy Adkins. role. Just put Scott Adkins in it. If, is... Okay, if you told me, hey, John, they're doing a true, McGee is doing a True Lies series, and I don't know what his role is, but Scott Adkins is at least in one scene in one episode. I'd be like, I'm buying. <laughs> <laughs> what we... about our guy from Into the Badlands? The oh. one that was just on. Daniel Wu? Oh, no. The guy who's going to be in Mortal Kombat. Assassin. He's in uh, the Wu Assassins, too. De uh, oh, man. The oh, yeah, he'd be really good. All right, we're almost there. We're pulling we, we love Wu Assassins and Into the Badlands, and there's a guy in that show we like a lot. And he just got cast. Oh, Eco UA just got cast in Mortal Kombat, too, John. Oh, lovely. Louis Tan. Louis Tan should be in there. He would so, be awesome at, opposite her. Louis Tan and Eliza Dushku crushing it. They're funny. I'd see that. Mm -hmm. I'd see she, that. She was funny as Faith. She draw and bring it on. Yeah, she was great as Faith. I, I saw all and of Buffy. Buffy. Very big fan. Ooh, Meg, write the script. Let's call Cameron. Okay. Let's get a hold of Mick G. And also, they're doing a Babysitter sequel, which made John start dancing to some fog hat. Oh my gosh, I just loved her in Ready or Not. Yes. So I was having a Twitter conversation with the guy who plays the clown in Terrifier. Oh, nice. And in talking about how we never got Ash versus Jason versus Freddy, so maybe we can get. Art versus because someone was like, oh, the Terrifier is getting a sequel, and so is the Babysitter. And then I made that comment and I said, wouldn't it be cool if we could get B versus Art the Clown? What did he say? Oh, he was, he's like, I'm all in. <laughs> that movie I don't want to watch, John. Uh, so John wrote a post, uh, a review for movies on the flicks about a movie called Terrifier, which looks too nasty for me. You no, know, it's I've been circling that movie for two years. <laughs> like I, I, it's always been in my queue, and then I'm like. Eh, I'm afraid this is going to suck. Like, I really thought that. And then I saw it, and I was I was pretty wowed by it. But it is 
gruesome. The title just sounds mean. Yeah, terrifying. It better be it, terrifying. It, it is mean. And for, but I tell you, Art the Clown, for, for a villain that has zero lines like Mike Myers, there is so much personality there. So it's it's almost worth watching just for that, but it's gruesome.